Hello students. Are you excited to study something new today? Chalo then. Let us explore something about our lives. Something that you have, something that I do have, and not just we, but the plants, the animals, each and every organism has. Can you guess what's that? Yes. That is about the cells. So what are these cells? But before that, we need to understand why are the living organisms different from the non-living things? See, we living organisms, we can walk, we can talk, we can move, we can breathe. And not just that, we excrete. The digestion is going on in our body. We are growing day by day. We can reproduce. And all these functions are going on in our body without our knowledge. How is all these things happening? All these functions are possible in our body because of the tiny structures present and they are nothing but the cells. We entirely are made up of the cells and these cells perform all these functions in our body. Let's take an example of a wall. A wall is made up of bricks, right? Similarly, we living organisms, the animals, the plants are all made up of the cells. Right from the tip of our hair to the tip of our toe, we are entirely made up of the cells. So I think now we can define what do you mean by cells? So the cell can be defined as the basic structural and the functional unit of every organism. So why is it called as the structural unit? It's called as the structural unit because it provides some sort of structure to a body and is called as functional because it performs various functions in a body and hence it's called as the basic structural and the functional unit of every organism. In fact, our life wouldn't have been possible without cells, right? See how thankful we should be to our cells. Yeah. So now that we have understood about the cells, let us see who discovered it. How did it come into existence? Okay. So there was a scientist who was once observing a very thin slice of a cork, which is nothing but the bark of a tree. So when he was observing it under a microscope, he could see some small box-like structures which was similarly to a honeycomb-like structure, okay? So he named these boxes or the compartment looking like structures as cell. So that's how the cell world came into existence. And not just that, these cells have variety shapes and they also vary in their sizes. Some cells may either be spherical, they may either be elongated, they may be, you know, shapeless or they may be branch-like. And not just that, they vary in the sizes. These cells are very tiny and cannot be seen with our naked eye and hence we need a microscope to see it. Okay, now depending upon the number of cells present in an organism, organisms can be classified as the unicellular and the multicellular. As the word says uni, uni means one or the single. So the organisms which are made up of the single cell are called as the unicellular organisms. Like amoeba and whereas multicellular, the word itself says is, it is made up of more than one cell. So the organisms like we, human beings, the plants, the animals are made up of more than one cell and hence we are called as the multicellular organisms. Here are some key points. 